This is Fred. At just 25 years old, Fred makes $100,000 per year, enjoying exotic holidays, buying luxury items, and dining at the fanciest restaurants. Each month, Fred is left with $300 in his bank account, which he either sets aside in a savings account or puts in a jar for his vacation fund. Fred isn't concerned about saving much money for the future because he's confident that his job is stable and he plans to earn good money each year. Here is Fred's twin brother, George. George hasn't quite taken the same career path as Fred. He prefers having time to spend with his wife and enjoys the everyday things in life. His career has been fairly stagnant for a number of years now, and he is happy to underachieve compared to his brother, earning a salary of $35,000. George lives a good life, but he doesn't feel the need to splurge on expensive items and luxury holidays. He likes to ensure he underspends his income so he can save for the future. At the end of each month, George has $600 left in his account. He transfers this into a brokerage account and invests it in low-cost index funds, which earn him an average of 10% return on his investment each year. In 40 years' time, Fred and George will be 65 years old and hoping to retire. Fred will be relying on social security and may need to find part-time work to maintain his standard of living, as he hasn't managed to save much towards retirement. George, on the other hand, will be happy to check his investment account and see that his savings have grown to over $3.3 million, all from only $600 per month. He never needs to work another day in his life, and he can support his family during retirement. Okay, this example is more on the extreme end of things when it comes to Fred's overspending and lack of intelligence. But the key point here is don't be like Fred. It's more than possible to build wealth on a lower income. You may even be able to do it faster and better than George did. The main thing to remember is that get-rich-quick schemes are not real, or at least not reliable. If there was an easy, sure-fire way to quickly become rich, then everybody would be rich. Building wealth takes time for most people, and the reason many people don't succeed is that the target dates for their goals are nowhere near long enough. People are too focused on the short term and expect results immediately. People hear stories of overnight successes, lottery winners, and people making millions from options trading. They hear this and they want it now. People are also really bad at keeping track of progress and maintaining effort even when they don't see results immediately. People are not good at noticing small improvements within themselves and within their lives. People don't realise that their life is 2% better than it was last month, or that they are 2% richer than they were. They don't notice that their newly formed habits have been working, because they don't see immediate success, so they lose motivation and give up too early. Think about George in the example. Do you think he felt differently each month as he became $600 richer? Do you think he felt differently when his investments compounded 10% over a single year? Probably not, but he stuck to his plan every single month and his persistence paid off big time. This may seem easier said than done when laid out in a basic example. You want to know exactly what you can do on a daily basis, starting now, in order to put yourself on the path to success. It doesn't matter how much money you earn, if you never save any of it. If you spend more and more each time you get a pay rise, also known as lifestyle creep or lifestyle inflation, this eats away at your extra earnings and keeps you poor. You'll always be living paycheck to paycheck. If you lost your job, what would you do? The thing that matters when it comes to getting rich or building wealth is how much money you have left at the end of each month. This is the money you can invest, which you can put to work for you rather than you working for it. It's important to note that in George's example, not only did he set good habits, he managed to stick to them for 40 years. So, let's take a look at some of the most important factors when it comes to building wealth. Creating good habits. This is probably the most important factor when it comes to building wealth. 
Even if you know exactly what you should do, it's extremely difficult to actually do it if you don't build good habits. For example, you know that you shouldn't eat junk food every day, and you should have a well-balanced diet of fruit and vegetables. But if you don't get into the habit of going grocery shopping, buying healthy food and cooking for yourself, then you'll never make the right decisions when it comes to your diet. The same applies with personal finance and investing. Even if you know you should pack your own lunch, stop taking Ubers everywhere, and spend less money on luxury items, it can be very hard to break these habits. You need to take it one step at a time and find ways to ensure you make the right budgeting decisions in small areas of your life. Once you stop wasting small amounts of money on unnecessary things, you'll find it much harder to overspend in general. Your new mindset won't allow it. Once you're in the habit of investing a small amount of money each month from the money you've set aside, you'll kick yourself if you miss one month of investing. Living below your means. Many of the world's most successful people state that living below their means was a key step to success. It's been widely reported that Warren Buffett still lives in the house he bought for $30,000 in 1958, driving an ordinary car and eating McDonald's. You don't need to take this to an extreme level, but you can never truly build wealth if you don't have money to invest. You need some money left at the end of each month to save or invest, so you can allow it to grow over time and start compounding. If you struggle with this, make a spreadsheet which tracks all of your expenses each month, so you can identify where you waste the most money. Alternatively, you can use a mobile banking app on your phone, which provides a monthly breakdown of your expenses. A good rule of thumb is to aim for a maximum of 50% of your income to go towards necessities, such as rent and bills. Then, aim for saving or investing at least 20% of your income, while the remaining 30% can go towards luxury items or other discretionary spending. Investing spare money. Now that you've saved the money, you need to actually invest it. We've all heard about the cost of living crisis running rampant in many countries all over the world. This is caused by inflation. Inflation is the increasing cost of everyday goods and services, which happens over time. This means that the same amount of money will buy you less in the future than it does now, as your buying power gets reduced by inflation. This is why it's important not just to save, but to invest. No matter how much money you save each month, if you don't invest it, then it will decrease in terms of real spending power. You need to convert your money into something which increases in value, rather than decreases. While there are no surefire ways to guarantee returns on investment, you can't have return without risk. It is generally agreed by finance experts that the most sensible option for most people is to simply invest in the low-cost index funds. We have a whole video on index funds, but these essentially allow you to invest in an overall market index such as the S&P 500, consisting of the 500 biggest US-listed companies, without having to buy and sell individual stocks yourself. According to Investopedia, the average annual return for the S&P 500 since 1957 has been 11.88%. This is despite wars, the dot-com bubble, the 2009 financial crisis, and the latest recession following on from the COVID pandemic. And as you saw at the start of this video, even a 10% annual return can make an average person a millionaire given enough time, provided they are committed to saving and investing that money each and every month. Building your net worth to $100,000. This is one of the biggest milestones on your path to building wealth and finding financial freedom. Many people, including Charlie Munger, cite the first $100,000 as being not only the hardest to achieve, but the most important. This is because before you reach this point, the compounding effect isn't working as much for you, and most of this money will come from your own hard work and from you living inexpensively and saving as much money as possible. This can be really tough, and it's a huge reason why so many people fail on this path. Once you achieve this though, compound interest will be much more noticeable year on year, and it won't take long before you earn more from your investments each year than you've actually put into them. If you're earning an average of 10% return on $100,000 net worth, then you're earning $10,000 per year, so you might already be earning more than your annual investment contributions by this point. 
In order to get here though, it's important to take your personal finances seriously and make difficult decisions when it comes to your spending and your priorities. If you can cut back on costs and live well below your means, you can work your way to the first 100k quicker than most people. Once you get there, you can take your foot off the gas a little and enjoy spending more of your income while your investments do the work for you. If you have $100,000 invested at a 10% annual return rate, you can make your next 100k in less than 8 years without even doing anything. The compounding effect is increasing your net worth more and more each year. This is why working your way to the first 100k is so important when it comes to building wealth. Diversifying income. This might sound complicated, maybe even out of reach for many people on lower salaries, but if the pandemic has taught us anything, it's that you can't always rely on your job for a guaranteed stable source of income. It's important to protect yourself so that if the time comes when you find yourself out of work, you can support yourself while trying to find a new job, or even build one of your hobbies or sources of side income into a full-time income. You can start off practicing new hobbies and learning new skills in your spare time, and find ways to slowly monetize these. Then, you can expand these activities and turn them into a real business. Learning how to manage your own money. At some point during this journey, you plan on becoming rich. At least, you plan on becoming fairly wealthy or having a lot of money invested. So it's important to know how to manage your own money. One of the biggest ways in which people waste money including wealthy people, when it comes to personal finance, is paying so-called experts to manage their finances for them. As we've already mentioned, passive index fund investing is often quoted as being the best choice for the majority of people, and this can be done online by yourself using a single brokerage or investment account. So why would you waste money paying a financial advisor or somebody to manage your investments for you? You need to learn how to manage your money and what to do when buying or selling your assets. This information is widely available for free online. Spending some time learning this for free could save you tens of thousands in fees throughout your life. It also feels really good to not need to rely on anybody when it comes to personal finance. Finally, increasing your income. Now, this might sound contradictory in a video about getting rich on a low salary, but you shouldn't think that you're destined to have a low salary forever. People often see others doing well and make the mistake of thinking that they must have some form of natural gift or talent in order to achieve these things, when in reality, they probably just worked really hard and never gave up. It's never too late to try and change your personal circumstances. Now, take this information and think about what you can do in your daily life to help create good habits and build wealth. What habits can you create which will help you move further towards your financial goals each and every day? It's important to focus on doing a little bit better each day and don't constantly judge yourself against your long-term goals as this can be demoralizing when they seem so far away. Please do your own research before making any investment decisions and click like on this video if it's been helpful. Thanks for watching.